communicate. You are the Lord that hears all prayers. You are the Lord that answers all prayers. You are the Lord that answers all prayers. With you, all things are done. Merdete kuse kepetenda bragadosa. Vi katata tu sikinda paragadosa de. Vi ata tarato tu skipele. Ota katika de kraka tu si a parata parakata kuse perepetembele. Vi ata tu si ala takata kotondere. Vi katu si ala takata kanda kotwa. Imba katu si a parakata si ala takata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father and our living grace, our Lord and our Father, we say thank you, Jesus. 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 For this absolute, we just glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, we ask you, O God. To visit us today, to anoint us today, to give us the grace to understand your word, to give us the grace to understand your word, to give us the grace to understand your word, give us the grace to understand of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our brain, open our heart in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. Hey. <laughs> By the special grace of God, this is Heaven and Air Life program. Which we used to do every day, 9 a.m. to 9 to 10 to 10 or 11 a.m. And we also used to do deliverance hour every 9 p.m. to 10 or 11 p.m. So as the Lord lead it, because uh, we don't really want to follow the time to help because the Lord might have another message to give to us. So, uh, by the special grace of God, my name is Apostle Peter Daniel, and uh, you are in Heaven and Air Live program, which we used to do 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Uh, today, we are going to speak the word of God. Today, we have the word of God to speak today. We want to talk about the errors the errors concerning the Sabbath day and what to eat, what to wear. What did the Bible say concerning the Sabbath day and what God says concerning what to wear, what to eat? It is a pity that nowadays I was, uh, it is a great pity that nowadays many prophets are coming out claiming that God spoke to them about the Sabbath day. The days of worship. Some will come out and say God spoke to them about what to eat and what not to eat. Some will come out and say God spoke to them about what to wear and what not to wear. So I want to, I want to speak about what God is saying concerning this thing and what the Bible says. I was asking God in my spirit, asking him that, Lord, what do you say? Is it you that tell the people about Sabbath day, about the days of worship? And he replied me. So today we want to go about it right now. And uh, if time permit, if time permit, probably we can also talk about uh, the baptism. Which one is the right? Is it the baptism of Jesus Christ or the baptism of the Paul, or the apostles of Jesus Christ? You see, I have to mention, I have to say it in that way because of the errors that is going on in the church right now. That's why I say, is it the baptism of Jesus Christ or the baptism of the of the apostles? So it's probably that we are going to uh, we are going to talk about it too. Um going to talk about it too. Uh, the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Right now we Amen. want to talk about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day, we want to talk about the Sabbath day. Mm. The Sabbath day came from the Bible in the Old Testament. 
whereby God told the Israelites about they, they must worship him. I might not be able to go too much in details because if I see I should go too much in details, our time will not permit it. But nevertheless, I will go into it in the word of God. The Basaba day came from the Old Testament when God was talking to the Israelites that they should rest on the seventh day. On the seventh day that you rest. And uh, anyone that does not sanctify that day shall be destroyed according to what is in the Old Testament. In those days, it is also said that in the Sabbath day, it is not appropriate for any man to carry load. It means on the Sabbath day, you are not up, you are not, you are not to carry any load on your head, in your hands. Also, it is also said in the Old Testament that you are not also allowed to cook on the Sabbath day. You cannot cook on the Sabbath day. That is what God was telling them there in the Sabbath day in the Old Testament. Also, in the Old Testament, you are not allowed to save anyone. Listen to me very well. That is why I want to tell you now. In the Old Testament, you are not also allowed to save anyone. Save in one sense. Probably if somebody got an accident, you cannot just go to the person and save him. If anyone is sick, you cannot go and pray for healing for that person. If any of your belongings, maybe your, God forbid, your child fell into a hole and is dying, or your, or your, your cow fell into a hole and is dying, you are not allowed to go and save him or the dog or anything that belongs to you. No matter the kind of critical case that your belonging might be, might be, you are not allowed to save that thing. That is in the Sabbath day. Also in the Sabbath day, you are not allowed to do any work. Neither can you farm or can you even do any work at all. Yeah, as I'm saying, I said it means that that Sabbath day is Saturday. The Sabbath day himself is Saturday. So it is not Sunday. Now, what happens in those days? The Israelites obey, and anyone that disobeyed that commandment will die, according to what God said uh, in, the, in, the, in his law. God worked for seven days, for six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Now, when Jesus now came into the world, when God gave that law, not that God was trying to contradict himself 
or is it trying to, you know, to make confusion? But there is something that happens that has never happened before. So when Jesus Christ came, there was a little bit solution into all these things. Not even a little bit, a big time solution. So, in that Sabbath day, the Israelite was still obeying it. And when Jesus Christ came, he disobeyed the law. Those Jesus Christ go to the temple and worship God in those moments. He went there to, you know, to do service with the Jew and the Israelite. But Jesus Christ disobeyed all the law that attached with it. For example, Jesus Christ ate the sick on the Sabbath day, which is improper. For example, you must not carry a load. Out of who Jesus Christ you, Jesus Christ commanded a man to carry his mat and go. He was unable to work for many years, and Jesus Christ healed him and asked him to carry his mat and go. On that same day, that same, uh, that same Saturday, which is Sabbath day, Jesus Christ's disciples were very hungry, and when they were going, they were trying to block like famine to eat. They were taking something famine to eat, and Jesus Christ permitted them to do that. I will ask, I will tell you why it happens. But listen, out of that same day, Jesus Christ was able to save people and do good to them. And when the Israelites see this and the Jewish see this, they were extremely very, very angry. They were a very, very, extremely, very, very angry. And in this time of things, it happens that uh, when they were angry, they were planning to kill him because he disobeyed the law. And when the, the, uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees that came and questioned him and asked him, why? Why are you disobeying the law of the Sabbath, the law of the land? The Lord that God has given to our father Moses. And Jesus Christ says something to them that make a solution to all the problems that the church and the people who claim to have gotten a revelation concerning the Sabbath day. Jesus Christ said, he said, man is not made for the Sabbath. Man is not made for the Sabbath. But the Sabbath is made for man. So it means that Ma is you, the one you, that we control the Sabbath, not the Sabbath that we control the man. So it gives us a breakthrough over the captivities and over the bondage of uh, the law of Sabbath day. Now, in this kind of sense, I will tell you very well that uh, uh, if the people who claim to have seen revelation about the Sabbath day, that we should go back to Sabbath to worship. I'm not, I'm not, sure, I'm not uh, disputing that we should. I also, in the heaven and hell, we also worship on Sabbath. But uh, I want to tell you something. If you wanted to go back according to what the revelation, the people were saying, that the revelation they have said that we have to go back to the Sabbath of the, the worship of the Sabbath day, whereby we have to fulfill the law of the Sabbath day. If you have to fulfill the law of the Sabbath day, you must not eat that day. You must not even take your car to your to your church that day. Because out of you taking your car to your church is also the disobedience of Sabbath law. Then, then number two, you are bringing yourself back to the bondage that God has set you free. There are some things that Bible said that Jesus Christ did not come to destroy the law, but he has come to make a correction. Jesus has come to make a correction to the law. We ought not to put ourselves into bondage anymore. It is so surprised that many people claim to have seen the revelation of heaven and hell and come, came and sat telling people about things that is not even biblical at all. Things that the Bible did not put in support of. And that is why Paul, Apostle Paul, 
was shouting it about somebody. You see, all these all many things that happens in the old in the in the now days has been prophesied in the time of the apostles. It's as if they have seen it. That's why the Bible said that the Bible is written with the with the with the word of God. You see, the Bible is made up, it's, it's written through the spirit of the Lord. It's as if they have known it. Paul spoke about the Sabbath day and he called against people trying to make it an idolic day. So there are people who are saying, there are people who are saying also that uh, the Sabbath day, uh, the, the Sundays, is not a proper day for worship. Listen to me very well, which I want every, everybody looking at me to listen and understand this. If we look at it very well, Sabbath day is the day that God has created to the worship. But if you look at it at the same time, Sunday was the day that our Savior, Jesus Christ, was not resurrected. The Sunday service was brought through the Roman Catholic, not Roman Catholic, but the first church, which, I mean, it's not the, uh, uh, the apostles, but the, the, the first church of our time, uh, for, for, I think Methodists or the uh, Catholic church like that, they brought the Sunday service into existence. And the reason they brought the Sunday service is not because of uh, anything, but because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, resurrected on the Sunday, on Sunday. So it's because he resurrected on Sunday, that is why they bring it into existence. That is why they bring it into existence that we should worship God on the Sunday, on Sunday, the day that our Savior came to, to life. I mean, he, he, he was resurrected. So it's not because because there were some people who were saying that uh, uh, the service of the of the Sundays are uh, uh, Sunday worship or something like that that is wrong. That they are worshiping gods of uh, Sunday. There is a gods of Sunday, uh, Sunday that there is a god called Sunday. Sunday that that god was was uh, was a sun god. Listen to me very well. The world we are now, I go into serious research into it. And I find out that every day has their own demon God that rules it. There is a demon that is ruling on Monday. There is a demon that is ruling on Tuesday. There is a demon that is ruling on Wednesday. There is a demon that is ruling on Thursday. There is a demon that is ruling on Friday. There is a demon that is ruling on the... Uh, uh, the, on, on, on the, uh, uh, there's a demon that is ruling on Friday, there's a demon that is ruling on Saturday, and there's a demon that is also ruling on Sunday. So every day is has their own demon that is ruling on it. So we cannot say that uh, uh, this particular day is for a demon. And every day, including every month, every month has a demon that is ruling on it. So we ourselves is the, is the one that is going to dedicate a day for him. So when I go back to God, I'm still going into the Bible, what the Apostle Paul said. When I go back to God in prayers, and I ask him that, Yo, is it true that you said that uh, uh, they, they must worship you on the, on the, on the Sabbath day, on, the sun, sun, on Saturday, and Sunday is a forbidden day to worship you, and anybody that worships you on Sunday is going to hell. And Jesus said it is a lie, that he did not say that to anybody. You see, please let us be very careful the way we speak and try to convince people about uh, the word of God. Please, I'm begging you in the name of God. I'm begging you in the name of God. Don't just come out and say you have it. If your revelation is not according to the Bible, please don't, don't say it. If your revelation is not according to the Bible, the Holy Bible, don't say it, please. Don't say it. I'm begging you in the name of God. Because you will account for everything you say after. I'm talking generally to people. You will account for everything you say out with your mouth. I'm begging you. The Bible clearly says that we should, you see, don't, oh my God. Please open your Bible. Open your Bible to, I'm coming, to Galatians. Galatian uh, 
I'm coming, please. Let's go to, I'm coming. I want to find it, right? Open your Bible to Romans chapter 14. Verses 5 to 6. Romans chapter 14, 35 to 6. You see, the, all these of the issue things, because I asked God, before I read the place, I asked God that, then when is the appropriate time to serve me? I want to serve you, O Lord. When is the appropriate time to serve you, O Lord? And the Lord said to me that, we are to serve him anytime we ask, you are, the, you are the person that will tell, say it in your heart. For example, you might dedicate a Monday for God. I say, okay, Monday is the day we want to start, to start, start serving God. Though. And God will be there on that day. Our God is not just the God of Sabbath day, not the just God of Sunday. Our God is the God of every day. He never sleeps, he never rests. Eh? He never sleeps, he never rests. Is a God of every day. Number two, if you, I, I, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm going to read that place. But let, 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 I'm going to read somewhere to you, but let's read that Romans first. Romans chapter 14, verse 5 to 6. It said, one man esteem one day above another. You see that? Five and six. One man esteem one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You, are, you have to be persuaded. Before you can say that, okay, this is the day we are to start God. This is, you have to be persuaded that this is the day we are choosing for God. He, no, verse is, he that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. You see that? He that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. You see that? And he that regarded not the day, to the Lord, he do not regard it. He that does not regard it any day, to the Lord too, he did not regard it. You see that? He that eateth, eat unto the Lord. Let me stop at that place because we are still coming in that place. You see what I'm saying now? You see what I'm saying? He that regarded it. Now, the, I, I went into the study of the apostles and I see that the apostles themselves, they did not have a particular day to worship God. They worship God every day. Me, I do see the generation of this time that we have to choose one day. That is why I decided, I decide within me that we are to worship God every day. That's why I'm having every and every program every day. And we use uh, uh, Saturday as our main service. The reason I'm using Saturday as my main service is not because I wanted to bring any revelation. But because I choose that day, I choose that day unto the Lord. Look at Act of Apostles chapter, Act of Apostles, open it. This chapter. Chapter 2, verses 46. 
Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verses 46. And they continually, daily, with one accord in temple, in the temple. You see that? The disciples, all of them, they're continually in the temple, in one accord. Listen to it very well. And breaking bread from house to house. You see that? Did eat their meals with gladness and singleness of heart. 45. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the thought daily, such as should be saved. You see that? They continually daily in the temple of the Lord. They do not have a particular day of service. But they continually in the daily of the Lord's service. They worship God in one accord in that day of service. It is a surprise thing now that the church of nowadays, people are now bringing different kinds of revelation. I'm begging you in the name of God. Don't let anybody come with a does any our revelation without the Bible, without the Bible uh, uh, from the Bible. Even though it is me, even though it is me that come with you in revelation that is not according to the Bible, don't accept it. Don't accept it. The, your revelation must be according to the scripture. Your revelation must be according to the Bible. If your Bible, if your revelation is out of the scripture, don't obey. I want you to open to Colossians chapter two, and this will clearly tell you what the Bible is saying now. Clearly, it will be so clear to you now. Starting from verses, uh, verses 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. This is referring to somebody that says you should not eat meat. Or in the drink. This is not talking about alcohol. It's talking about what you drink. Or in the respect of the, of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day, you see that. Verse seventeen, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of is of Christ. You see that. Now I'm going to read another fashion for you so that you can understand very very well. I want to read King, um, new good news to you now. So that we understand what the Bible is saying concerning the days of worship. I don't know why people are just uh, having their own think of knowledge. 16 and 17. So let no one make rules about what you eat or drink. You see that? Let no one make rules about what you eat or drink, or about holy day, or about new moon festival, or the Sabbath. All these, all such things, are only a shadow of things in the future. The reality is Christ. You see what? It is so. It is so painful that many people are not coming with. There are many many verses in the Bible I can show you. Many verses in the Bible I can show you, which the, which the Bible was talking about the Sabbath day here. Please, we, we have to be very, very, very careful about what we say. The reason why Sunday service is made is because Jesus resurrected on the Sunday, on the Sunday day, on, on, on Sunday. So that is why they say we should be worshiping, not because of anything. You are not to put yourself under the law of the Old Testament anymore. 
If you want to worship God, that is unto you and to God. If you like, you can worship God on Saturday. If you like, you can worship God on Sunday. If you like, you can worship God on any day. It is you and God, between you and God. Not that you will tell somebody that if the person did not worship God on the, on the Sabbath, on Sunday, on Saturday, that the person is going to hell. That is wrong. That is very, very wrong. Opposed to Joseph, are your daily Babalala, which was a Nigeria prophet, man of God. Many more people have seen him in heaven. He's, he's worshiping on Sunday. The Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, that is on the issue of the Sabbath day. On the second one, I want you to talk about something came into my mind and I remembered. There are also revelations that is going on about uh, the name of Jesus Christ. Some are saying that his name is not Jesus, that his name is Yeshua. Some are saying that Jesus Christ is dark and is not yellow. Some are saying that Jesus Christ is white and it's not dark. Some are saying different kind of things. Some are saying that his name is, uh, is uh, in fact, they are calling different, uh, the one I know is Yeshua. Different kind of name. That because he's from Israel and this and that and this, you know, he says he's a dark man because he's from Africa, he's from this and that. Some say his, his skin is like the skin of a sand. And, uh, he said, you are not supposed to be using Jesus Christ to pray. Uh, somebody came to me and tested me one day about a week ago. He said that uh, you are not supposed to be using Jesus' name to pray. You are supposed to be using Yeshua. I said, my dear brother, my bright brother, the name I know is Jesus Christ. Whether his name is Yeshua or it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not Yeshua, the name that I personally know is Jesus. And I cannot change that name for anything. If you look at the generation of this time, truly his name might be called Yeshua before. But what I read in King James is Jesus. It's not Yeshua. People, revelation are now coming now. Whether it's from the pit of hell, I don't know. Or it's from normal, I don't know. They wanted to wipe the name of Jesus in with right? They wanted to wipe that name in with It's as if they wanted to wipe that name away. Whether they research and say that the name is Jesus Christ, name is Yeshua, I don't want to care. The people that were saying that the name of Jesus Christ is Yeshua, they didn't accept the name before. When Jesus Christ came to Israel, no Israel, Israel it's only very few who that accepted the Jesus. Israelites rejected Jesus. Until today, they did not believe in Jesus. Because of the rumors and lies, the soldier who, 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 who kept the body of Jesus Christ to the, 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 the people there. And the rumors go out that Jesus Christ was holy and he did not get selected. And because of that, nobody believed in Jesus in this strength. So is that place now that they are now preaching that they should be calling Yeshua, not Jesus Christ today? Please, my beloved people that are looking at me, never change the language Jesus. He said his, his name has he said the, the name has been given unto us. At the name of Jesus, every is about. If you can be calling the name of Jesus and healing has taken place, if you can be calling the name of Jesus and demons are, are being cast out and they are, you know, they are being cast out, you did not call Yeshua when demons are running away. You are only calling Jesus. Huh? The apostles were calling Jesus. Huh? The men of God of now, this, that are true men of God, they are calling Jesus. A miracle are taking place. Please be very careful of the revelation in God. Jesus is the only name they gave to us. I don't know about the name Yeshua. Whether the name, name of Jesus is Yeshua, I don't want to know. Jesus is one I know. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, that's all. Please be very careful of this kind of revelation. Be careful. What you see in King James is what you are going to do. King James is our Bible. I'm begging you in the name of God. Let me tell you, if you are to follow what the people are saying, you will go wrong. Because there are some Bibles that if you go to Israel, you went, you went there and ancient Bibles. If you went there and read it, you will see many things there. 
Since I thought book of Moses is also a Bible, it's God that does, God cancel it for people to be reading it because it's dangerous. It's a magical, it's a magical book. There are some things that you do not even need to be listening to or to be reading that can affect your heaven to journey to heaven. Like this kind of Yeshua of a matter. I don't know about it. The one thing I know is just Jesus is our Lord. I don't want to know about the name of this. I don't want one thing that somebody asked me and said, please, sir, I want to ask you a question. The Jesus that you used to see, is he a dark man or a, a, a white man? And I, I laughed. She said, I laughed. I said, one thing I know is this. When I was very small at the age of seven years old, Jesus Christ used to come to me physically and speak to me. And the picture I saw, I mean the face I saw when I was small, because it used to come to me physically. The face I saw, Jesus Christ, the face of Jesus Christ I saw, eh, was a, 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 a African face. When I was seven years old, he used to come with a wide hair, ears, white, white, very white, white ears. Whether it is that Yeshua or not, I don't want to know. But when he came to me, he said to me, he said, I am Jesus. How many of you, did Jesus appear to you and say that I am Yeshua? Eh? Jesus said to me, he said, I am Jesus. That's what Jesus Christ told me. He never told me, I said, I am Yeshua. He never said that to me. He said, I am Jesus. Jesus Christ of the Nazareth. You see, you have to be very, very careful. And after I grew up, Jesus did not used to come in a physical, he not used to come in a uh, black man picture again. He come in a white man. He co- sometimes we come in a white man. Sometimes we come in a African man. Sometimes we come in different, he can come in a young man, he can come in a hood man, he can come in a white man, he can come in any way, any kind of, he used to appear to me, but well, I used to know it is him. He will tell me he's Jesus, and I used to know it is him. Because he has become to I know his sign. They are saying that Jesus Christ will show you that no Satan can show you, no demon can show you. If he strikes you, he will be destroyed. So I know it is him. So please, I beg in the name of God, stop making confession in the body of Christ. I beg you. Another thing I want to say is this. I, I, watched in, I watched some video about a woman and one man. And they were trying to say that uh, the Lord told them that they should not be eating chicken. They should not be eating fowl. They should not be eating goat. Don't eat meat at all. Don't eat fish. Don't eat uh, anything meat. Then the question is, what, will you go, what are you going to eat? I don't know what he's told you. You should not drink milk. Don't drink tea. Ah, God. Don't drink tea. There are food you should eat. And it starts mentioning them one by one. I'm begging you in the name of the Lord. I'm begging you. Be careful of these things. Be careful of the revelation in the civil. When the Bible, I've read it happily, that in Colossians chapter, chapter 2, it was Paul that is talking here. He said, let no man judge you about what you eat here. Let no man judge you about what you eat here. If you know you, do, you cannot eat chicken, bring it to my house. I will eat it. Yeah, the teacher was saying that she bought, uh, she bought a uh, fowl, she bought this, and she, she had bought many food at home, and that food. If the funny part that they you not, you should not eat tomatoes. Do eat pepper. Please, what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat today? What do you want to eat? You should not eat tomatoes, you should not eat pepper. Say, what do you want to eat? You'll be eating. <laughs> Very soon, they will tell you, you should not eat rice. Beans, that you not say, you will start eating Gary. No, seriously speaking, I don't know. It looks so funny, but it, it is, it is, I don't know. The way people, I'm begging you in the name of God, be careful of what you listen to. Any revelation that is not in accordance to the Bible, they are trying to bring you back to the Old Testament, whereby God said there are some animals you should not touch. Ah, ah, ah. When Jesus Christ himself eats peace, and somebody says you should not eat peace, eh? 
Do you still read it in the New Testament that Jesus Christ was, he said, he, give, he eats fish with his disciples. <laughs> in Ladia, he eats fish and bread. And he gives to the people. He fed over 5,000 people. He fed over uh, uh, 4,000 people. 6,000. Casting of only men. They did not add women's number. They did not add students' number. Only men. So if we add the children's number and the, and the women's number, Together with the men, probably it might be 15,000 people or so, or more than that. Jesus fell them with fish and bread. And somebody came and said, Do eat fish. I'm begging you in the name of God. Be careful of the kind of thing you eat. Be careful what, 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 what they will tell you not to be doing. Since you not eat, do meat, eat, eat meat again. Is it in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? And why are you asking people to fool you? Be careful of those who came in the name of revelation. If the revelation is according, it's not according to don't accept it. Don't accept it. Let the Bible judge you. And the Lord is not going to judge you with the Old Testament. He's going to judge you with the New Testament. Never the let there are some laws. That is, is in Old Testament, not about food, but that God is still going to require us to obey. But not about telling you that you should not eat food. You should not eat meat. You should not drink meat. Don't drink tea. Don't eat chocolate. Don't eat uh, fish. Don't eat meat. Don't eat many things. Don't eat uh, rice. Eh? Don't eat beans. Is guy that you be drinking? Eh? What is the meaning of all these things? Eh? I pray the Lord will save you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Another one I want to talk about is this. I suppose to be open it for you to you for the but uh, I will not uh, I will not do that because of the time. I want to round up things very fast. Another thing they used to talk about is clothes. You see the clothes I wear. They say it's a sin. For me to wear these clothes. I mean, I don't know why people are giving different kind of revelation. They say that this kind of clothes should not be wear. There's another man that said you should not wear this kind of clothes with this kind of uh, stuff now. I should not wear it. There's another person that said that the kind of shirt you are wearing you should not wear it. That you should go and sew, uh, you know, uh, all this uh, Ghana must go back. Or this this bag they used to carry beans. You should go and throw it and start wearing it. So you should not, you should start dressing like, uh, I don't know. So that people will start looking at you as uh, something else. Some were saying that you should not dress something that you should go and find a uh, line or line, I don't know. You should go and uh, sew it and start wearing that. All these clothes that is the same. I'm begging you in the name of God. Be careful of this kind of revelation. They are all false revelation. I say it. By the special grace of God, when Jesus Christ met me when I was seven years old, he told me that he had sent me to correct the errors in the church. And when I grew up to start the ministry, he came to me, he touched my tongue with his hand. He touched my tongue. And he said, as from today, I have put in my word inside you. You will not say the word of yourself again. You will be saying my word as from today. I will force you to speak all my desire, my own desire. He's talking about himself. I would say, you will say it out. And since that day, anything that comes out from my mouth is from God. This kind of revelation is not a revelation. It is a bondage from the pit of hell. Just to make you to be weak in the spiritual realm. When you get to a stage, you will start thinking that, ah, in fact, I think this thing is too hard. I pray the Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, now, I want to talk about the baptism. The baptism of... Uh, the baptism of... Uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've said it before that time that if time permits me that I'm going to talk about it. The baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ or the baptism of the apostles apostles 
Look at the book of uh, Matthew chapter. Matthew chapter 28. Read from verse 19. I will read from verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ said we should baptize the nation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Out of Apostles chapter 2, verse 38. Open your Bible. That I was going to the baptism of the apostles now. Act of Apostles chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. He said, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of what? Jesus Christ. Which one is the correct one? The one that uh, Jesus said we should baptize, or the one that Peter said we should baptize, which one is the best correct? I will tell you this. Some people are saying if you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that baptism is wrong. And you can go to hell for it. Some are saying you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. Whether you baptize in the name of Jesus, or you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are both correct. They are what? They are both correct. But there's both there. Yeah. But there is one that we're supposed to do. We as the as the disciples of Jesus Christ, as one of the sender of Jesus Christ, we ought to baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, the reason why. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, said we should baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He was trying to, uh, he was trying to simplify. Uh, let me say, he was, he was trying to, to, to explain the details of who he is. That he should baptize people in his own name, in the in the threefold person he is. The reason I said threefold person is that Jesus Christ is the Father. Jesus Christ is the Son Himself. Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost. So when you take a man to his sea and you said you baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are just, it's as if you are calling one man three name. Are you with me now? If you baptize the person in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are still saying baptizing Jesus Christ. As if I'm saying, I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name of that three things. Because Jesus Christ is the Father himself. Jesus Christ is the Son himself. And Jesus is the Holy Ghost himself. If I say, I will go into that big study later. I might not be able to go now because of our time. But uh, I will go into that study later. So, Jesus Christ is the one. There's nothing like Trinity. Jesus is not Trinity. Jesus is one. He's one for. He's, he's one. He's the same Father. He's the same Son. He's the same Holy Ghost. So the better. So the apostle of Jesus Christ got that knowledge after, after Jesus Christ died. I mean, sorry, after Jesus Christ died and resurrected and went to heaven. So the apostle of Jesus Christ got a revelation in the spirit that they do need to call the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because they are, saying, they are also calling the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost, and they are calling one name. Because Jesus Christ is the Father, is the Son, is the Holy Ghost. So they are calling one name three times. So because of that, the disciple decided to call the baptize, to baptize people in the name of Jesus Christ. Just one. Once you call in Jesus Christ, you are also baptized in the, in the, in the whole name. I get what I'm saying now. Because Jesus Christ is the same Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So that is why they now said, we're just going to baptize them in the name of Jesus. 
So when they said in Jesus' name, it has carried the whole matter. If you also baptize in the name of the Father and the Holy Ghost, you are also baptizing in the right way, but not in a purely right way. Because the right way, instead of you saying Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you have to just say in Jesus' name. Now, in that time that Jesus Christ gave that uh, message to the people, Jesus Christ just resurrected. Are you getting me now? So it is when Jesus Christ died that, I mean, died and resurrected. Uh, sorry, it is when Jesus Christ went back to heaven, resurrected and went, went back to heaven, that the disciples have to start using the name of Jesus. They use the name of Jesus Christ to do everything they do. So they baptize people now in the name of Jesus. Now, they baptize them in the name of Jesus. So the proper baptism is the name of Jesus. So I have to explain it to you that is correct. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy is correct, but it's not as correct as you using the name of Jesus Christ. If you say it is not correct, then you are trying to say that what Jesus Christ says is not correct. And if you are you are you are sinning against him himself. So we, we cannot say it's not correct. It's correct, but to use the appropriate language, appropriate thing to baptize is just to use the name of Jesus to baptize. Just say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. And rest, that's all. And that baptism, baptism will be completely done and be perfect. So the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we are going to end the service now. We have explained, I've explained the, the errors that people are making. Please and please, everybody that is saying that you because you are baptized in the name of Father, the Holy Ghost, your baptism is a wrong and you are going to hell. That language is wrong thing. You cannot say one baptism is wrong. You cannot say. You can only explain it to people to, for them to understand the mystery between the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and using the name of Jesus Christ alone. You cannot say anybody will go to hell because of that. And they're not following the Bible. They follow the Bible. If they baptize the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they also follow the word of Jesus Christ. But you just have to explain it to them and let them know the meaning of uh, seeing the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And uh, the using of the name of Jesus Christ. When they, they understand it, they too, they will, they will watch, they will repent of their ways and they will, uh, they will start using the name of Jesus alone for everything. So please, we are, there are some things that you can say you are going to have for. And there are things you, can, you cannot say you are going to have for. Because if you see that, you are making a mistake. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I think this is what we want to talk about. Uh, next time, we are going to speak about uh, the, the what, why is Jesus Christ the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Uh, we are going to talk about it. Why is this thing, why, when Jesus Christ was on earth, why is this saying that he has Father in heaven when he knew he's the Father? Uh -huh. We are going to talk about it. Why is all this thing happening? We are going to go deep next time. Just uh, this is in the same heaven and hell program. So I pray the Lord God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please and please subscribe to my channel, Apostle Peter Daniel, in YouTube. Go to if you have not go to my YouTube before, go to my YouTube. Uh, press uh, search Apostle Peter Daniel. You will see my picture here. I'm wearing suit here. You will see my picture here. Subscribe to that channel. And I pray the Lord God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you for watching the program with us. The Lord will be with you and anoint you the more in Jesus' name. Now let us pray as we end up the program. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we appreciate you for the message we had today. We thank you because of your spirit. We thank you because of your name. We say, blessed be your holy name in Jesus' name. We ask you, O oh Father God, that you breathe into our life. You anoint our tongues. You anoint our life to obey your, your, your word. And you give us the knowledge of your word so that if anybody comes not in the name of the Lord, if, any, if anybody comes in the name of heresy, we'll be able to understand that this one is coming in the name of heresy and we get the person and able to stand for the word of God. I pray the Lord God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. In name. My name remains Apostle Peter Daniel from Nigeria. Uh, please subscribe to my channel as once again. This is Heaven and Air Live program. We used to do it. Uh, please, it's everyday program, 9 a.m. to uh, 10 or 11 a.m. And we used to do deliverance program on uh, 
on the Zoom to uh, 9 p.m. Nigeria time to 11 p.m. 10 or 11 p.m. So please join us in this Zoom. You can hire me on my on my WhatsApp. I pray the Lord will help in Jesus' name. And, and uh, number one thing, number that thing is that uh, if you wanted to support the ministry, do hesitate to support us. You can WhatsApp me on my number, as my number is in other no, uh, other messages I have uh, written there. Uh, but I will I will not uh, I will not stop calling it. My number is plus two three four eight one three eight nine six six two eight seven. Once again, plus two three four eight one three eight nine six six two eight seven. That is my number. You can call me on WhatsApp me. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.